patch 12.20 is just about to drop, so we're here to get you guys set up with the best solo carries of the patch. Three champions for every single role that have the highest potential to impact games on their own for the solo queue meta. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least five divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. In an incredible spot coming off his 12.19 buffs, we have Nasus kicking off the top three for top lane. This is the first time in many months, maybe even years, that Nasus has had a high standing for solo queue. With Aatrox nerfed again this patch, it will allow Nasus to thrive even more, as Aatrox was his most common matchup in previous patches. The extra range on Q and added attack speed slow turns Nasus into an absolutely deadly skirmisher once you get the ball rolling. With Ghost popped combined with the added range on Q, it's actually pretty difficult to kite Nasus now. Early levels are always going to be where Nasus struggles the most, but in reality it's not too difficult to survive when you have Doran, Shield, Fleet, and Second Wind providing ludicrous sustain. With Shen's global impact and W being able to shut down Nasus' kit pretty hard, he's one of the better bans for Nasus. The Frozen Heart nurse will definitely hurt Nasus in certain matchups, but it may just bring back priority to an earlier stone plate purchase. Adapt to each game, and if the enemy comp does not have a ton of auto attack reliant champs, skipping Frozen Heart is a good idea. Another top laner climbing the ranks in recent patches due to many indirect changes is Mordekaiser. Set, Aatrox, and Maokai all nerf this patch, gives even more priority over to Mordekaiser and amplifies his strength. What makes Mord such a solo queue god is his ability to skirmish insanely good post level 6. Mord in a 2v2 or even a 1v2 for that matter can feast like no other. When Mordekaiser has ult, he's able to pressure extremely hard because even if he gets collapsed on, at the very least, Mord's going to come out of it trading one for one. One of the higher value bans for Mordekaiser is Fiora as her W and crazy mobility can be difficult to play around. For the build, you can run the more offensive setup of Riftmaker into Rylai's and Demonic Embrace, or if you like being more durable, Sunfire in place of Riftmaker is a viable strategy too. Keystone Rune is always Conqueror with Triumph Tenacity in the last stand. Grab Second Wind and Revitalize for secondaries. The one top laner you simply cannot go wrong with for the past few months now has been Shen. Shen really didn't need any more indirect help, but with his two most common matchups being Aatrox and Set, both nerfed for 12.20, Shen will dominate even more moving forward. Shen being a good answer to Nasus gives him even more priority, as we've seen a big spike in Nasus' play since his buffs. To win from top lane, you either have to smash the 1v1 or perma roam, and Shen can do a little bit of both, which puts him on a level above everyone else. Mord or Singed are good bans for Shen, as he struggles more into spellcasting champions since he doesn't have the ability to fully utilize his W. Build for Shen is a Sunfire or Frostfire Rush into Titanic Hydra 2nd and Thornmail 3rd. Run Grasp as the Keystone with Shield Bash, 2nd Wind, and Overgrowth. Cheap Shot and Ultimate Hunter are the optimal secondaries. Echo is back and in an absolutely incredible spot as a result of his 12.19 buffs. As a champion who comes online super hard with two items, the AP ratio buffs provide Echo with an even deadlier mid-game spike. Something many players are sleeping on right now is the fact that Nashers has become indirectly stronger due to the 12.19 changes. 100 AP on Nashers as opposed to only 75 on Lich Bane allows for Nashers to benefit a little more from the AP ratio buffs. The data backs this up too as Nashers and Lich Bane were neck and neck win rate wise in previous patches but after the changes Nashers has started winning a full 1% more. Kindred is one of the more ban worthy champions for Echo. Whenever Kindred has ult it makes finding successful pick plays super difficult and you're way more restricted to how you can play. Dark Harvest and First Strike are both viable keystone options for Echo. First Strike is definitely quite undervalued on Echo and wins a bit more than Dark Harvest due to how it synergizes with Echo's mid-game spike. The extra gold from First Strike combined with running Futures Market allows you to hit your core faster and start taking over games earlier on. Udyr has settled in and found himself in a very powerful spot post-mini rework. After a bunch of tweaking from Riot over the past couple patches, Udyr can now be played in so many different ways, enabling him to fulfill his team's needs for every game. Matchup-wise, Udyr wins against most meta junglers, but Belveth is one worth banning right now. One thing worth noting build-wise for this patch is that Demonic Embrace is being adjusted. Health is down and AP is up, so you'll now be a little more vulnerable for the exchange of more damage. Change should be relatively power neutral. Although Frozen Heart is being nerfed, it's actually purchased third on Udyr, so the change won't even affect him for a lot of games. Deadmans is a perfectly viable alternative anyways, as the core of Sunfire into Demonic and Deadmans is going to be great for 12.20. If you're playing into a very heavy, squishy enemy comp, the Koreans have been loving a full lethality Q max setup. It's by far the most popular build in Korea, while the majority of Western Udyr players prefer tank. 
You can meet in the middle as well with the Bruiser build of Trinity into Blade. Conqueror is the optimal keystone if you're playing Bruiser or Tank, while Hail Blades works best if opting for the lethality setup. Making her way to the top of the solo queue meta and the ultimate carry jungler for 12.20 is Belveth. Belveth's kit has everything you're looking for in a good solo carry champion, with incredible skirmish strength and insane mobility. The damage reduction from E turns her into this pseudo tank, and she can build full damage but remain difficult to take down. Belveth currently sees a ton of success into Graves and Lee Sin, who are her two most common matchups right now. Kindred is a solid ban option for Belveth, as her low cooldown mobility nullifies a lot of Belveth's skirmish power. On hit builds are the way to go, as Kraken Slayer and Blade of the Rune King are core. From then on out, Death's Dance, Wit's End, or Rage Blade all have a place depending on the enemy comp. Keystone Rune is Conqueror, followed by Triumph, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras. Roll with Free Boots and Cosmic Insight for secondaries. Coming off his buff from 12.19 and a really good answer to many of the meta mid lane picks is Fizz. With Syndra being the most played mid laner, Fizz has been feasting, winning over 56% of the time in the matchup. Echo being played more as a mid laner is really nice too, as Fizz can smash the matchup early on. Vex or Silas are two of the better bans for Fizz right now due to their high play rates and ability to nullify Fizz's snowball potential. Playing around Fog of War and getting to objectives before the enemy team is key to your success on Fizz. If you can find picks on the enemy squishies as they walk in alone and transition that into stacking dragons, you're going to win a ton of games with Fizz. Ludens is the rush item while Lich Bane and Zhanya's are interchangeable second and third items. For runes, grab Electrocute with Sudden Impact, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. Triumph and Coup de Gras are the best secondaries. One of our longest standing solo carries and our second mid lane pick the patch is Vex. Although we don't see a ton of Vex in the pro scene, she absolutely dominates solo queue. In pro, you just don't see these picks like Katarina, Yasuo, or Yone as much, but in solo queue, they are all played a ton, and Vex can annihilate all three. Just in general, way more melee mids are played in solo queue than in pro, and Vex does an exceptional job at shutting them down. Longer range mages are who Vex struggles against the most, so Victor is always a solid ban with his high play rate. Ludens is the best rush item for most games, however, if you're playing into a very short ranged comp, then Everfrost is a viable alternative. Shadow Flame and Zanyas are great second and third items. Electrocute is the keystone with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter. Run Mana Flow and Scorch for secondaries. Despite the recent nerfs to Eclipse, Zed is still the best AD assassin you can play for solo queue. Prowler's Claw is actually Zed's best performing mythic item now as it offers the most amount of early game snowball power. Zed is another mid laner who's liking the fact Syndra is back and being played a ton as his mobility and burst does a great job at punishing Syndra's lack of a gap closer. Silas is always a good ban for Zed and since he's still being played at a very high rate it's good value. Eclipse remains a great rush item if you value the defensive impact it provides while Prowler's or Duskblade offers more snowball power. Ghost Blade second item and Cyrilda's Grudge third round out the core for most games. Pick up Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, and Ultimate Hunter, followed by Transcendence and Scorch for secondaries. The most undervalued ADC coming off some massive 12.19 buffs is Twitch. These AP ratio buffs have made it so that Twitch has the luxury of running an AP or AD build, and both are equally as strong. You can pick Twitch and not have to worry about your team locking full AD or full AP, which is something the majority of ADCs are not able to do. It's also more valuable to run a Doran's Ring start now, which you can do regardless of building AD or AP. This allows Twitch one extra potion over the enemy ADC, unless they start Longsword, but if they start Doran's Blade, the potion advantage can be massive for early in lane. Twitch is most vulnerable into heavy engage or pick champ, so Mumu or Blitz are good bans. AP build is a Nasher's Tooth Rush into Rabadon 2nd and Crown of the Shattered Queen 3rd. Halo Blade's the keystone as you want to be able to stack passive as fast as possible. For AD Twitch, it's a Blade of the Ruined King Rush into Kraken Slayer 2nd and Hurricane 3rd. Lethal Tempo is going to be the more optimal keystone for the majority of games with the AD build. No nerfs planned for Misfortune this patch, so continue to abuse her while you can. There's actually not a single ADC buffed or nerfed for 12.20, so there's no question MF will be of highest priority. Lethal Tempo had been gaining popularity on MF recently, but now that it's being nerfed, you should go back to PTA. Press the attack is just very consistent as your Q applies a stack so you can proc the rune very quickly. You don't really need to worry about banning a specific ADC when playing MF, using it on Yasuo or any heavy dive champ is a good idea. For the build, it's a Kraken Slayer Rush into the Collector or Bloodthirster 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Prioritize the Collector when against a ton of squishy champions, while Bloodthirster is better into more bruisers or tanks that will be stacking armor.
Our third solo carry ADC of the patch is going to be Tristana, as she's super underrated after many recent changes. It feels like everyone just forgot about the Q buffs from a few patches back that heavily amplify Tristana's level 3 all-in power. This, combined with the fact Thresh is back in meta, Blitzcrank is being played a ton while Yumi and Lulu no longer have the highest support play rates, bode super well for maximizing Tristana's potential. The Dragon update patch was a while ago now, but it's another reason to why Trist should be played way more than she is. Tristana has great shove with E and can punish mistakes better than most ADCs, so having that first move in lane is key to your team securing as many dragons as possible. You can't go wrong with banning MF right now, while a support like Janna, who can neutralize your all in power, is a good option as well. The build is Kraken Slayer Rush into Phantom Dancer 2nd and Infinity Edge 3rd. Run Halo Blades for the Keystone when paired with an aggro support like Leona, Thresh, or Blitz, while Lethal Tempo works best with enchanters like Yumi, Lulu, or Karma. Riot completely overshot with the 12.19 Blitzcrank changes, turning him into the most broken support. So they'll be tuning him down a bit for 12.20, but not to the extent where he'll fall substantially in power. Q damage is only being nerfed rank 2 onward, so for the first three levels, Blitz's all-in power will remain ridiculously strong. The 12.19 base attack speed buffs combined with the attack speed buffs to W have provided Blitz with a super potent level 3. Now when you hook the enemy and they live with a sliver of health, it's so much easier to get those last couple autos in to finish them off. Ezreal and Trist can do a really good job at neutralizing Blitz's early game power, so they are two good ban options. The build is a Locket or Shirelia's Rush into Zeke's second and Wardstone third. Roll with Glacial as the keystone, followed by Hex Flash, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Bone Plating and Unflinching are the way to go for secondaries. With Maokai nerfed pretty heavily for 12.20, if you want that strong engaged teamfight support, then a Mumu will fit the bill. When it comes down to skirmishing post level 6 around key objectives like Dragon, few supports do it better than a Mumu. The long range pick power followed up by the multi man lockdown allows Amumu to set up plays extremely well. The damage Amumu is able to output is also very respectable for a support with that much engaged threat. Worst matchups for Amumu are supports who can deny his all in power, so Janna or Morgana are optimal bans. The build is an even shroud rush into Zanya second and Thornmail third. Aftershock is the best keystone when you're against an aggro bot lane duo, while you can get away with Glacial when playing into a more passive lane. 12.20 is a very light patch for support, so you can bet Janna will be a great pickup once again. Janna does a phenomenal job at shutting down so many of the melee supports like Amumu, Nautilus, Pike, and Leona. The peel power is unmatched and can deny many of the dive champions we see played so much in meta. Worst matchups for Janna are champs who can beat her from range, so Blitz or Zyra are good band choices. Rush a Moonstone into Redemption or Putrefire second and Ardent Sensor third. Although Putrefire is purchased a ton on Janna, it's quite overrated for most games, so if the enemy comp lacks heavy healing, definitely side with prioritizing Redemption and Ardent. For runes, you'll pick up Glacial with Free Boots, Biscuits, and Cosmic Insight. Fonts of Life and Revitalize are for secondaries. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skill Capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So with Season 12 winding its way down, there are your top three solo carries of the patch. Good luck with your end of season climbs, and we will see you in the next one.